Hello, welcome to this series Unlock Circuit Design Using ADS. My name is Anurag Nigam and uh, today uh, we are going to make use of the components which you have developed till now in this series as well as in Digital Circuit Design to design some of the sub-circuits or rather systems uh, using those components and such systems uh, we start with uh, what is known as phase lock loop right and phase lock loop is very important in communication circuits as well as in radars and as the as the name as the name indicates uh, this basically circuit is going to lock the phase right so lock the phase to what a reference now why is it important let's try to understand that let's say that there is a VCO whose output is let's say a0 sine of omega 0 t okay but then along with this uh, there is uh, a certain phase which is a function of time so this is a function of time right now this basically is what is known as the phase noise right now phase noise we are going to see uh, basically uh, is is a noise of the device which is half converted to around the carrier so basically let's say if you want a pure tone like like this but we have an undesired undesired around around this frequency we have something undesirable around it so this is referred to as uh, phase noise and we have covered this phase noise when we were uh, discussing VCO in the previous section when we discussed the Leeson's model right so now the idea is if we can minimize this phase noise now one way to minimize this is going to be establish some reference which is much more stable much more stable than this VCO okay so this is going to be some kind of a crystal right and we are going to use such crystal to establish a reference so let's say that crystal establish a reference frequency of f ref right and we give this to a comparator some form of a comparator so this is going to be phase frequency detector or p f d phase frequency detector so what's going to happen is i'm going to take this frequency now this f ref is going to be much much smaller than f out or omega naught so omega naught is much much greater than omega ref okay so now what you have to do is we have to divide this frequency by a divider right so we divide the frequency by a divider let's say we divide it by n and that means that we come close to f ref so we do f naught divided by n equal to f ref so this is going to be the stable condition when it locks but before that it may be unequal right so now what's going to happen is we divide the frequency by n whatever so that means that whatever output frequency we establish is going to be n times of f ref <coughs> now having said that this phrase and frequency detector is going to uh, generate two two outputs okay two signals one is let's say going to be up signal other is going to be down signal so let's say the frequency which we have okay uh, frequency f naught is higher than what is desired so if say <coughs> let's say f naught dash is larger than f naught so in this case what will happen is uh, PFD okay will generate a down signal so we have to down the frequency right uh, if we have F naught double dash which is generated at the output which is smaller than F naught then PFD is going to generate a up signal so a PFD basically is going to be uh, a circuit which tells whether the the frequency generated is currently higher than F ref or frequency divided by n is higher than f ref or lesser than f ref and accordingly it is going to generate two signals up signal and down signal so 
this signal is basically driving something called a charge pump okay now there are other ways of doing this phase lock loop where this analog portion can be replaced by a digital portion right which we are going to develop later uh, which is known as all digital pll but right now we are going to talk about analog pll and its subcomponents sub circuits okay so the the idea of a charge pump is basically force a current so basically let's say this vco is a function of frequency so vco frequency is a function of kvco which is the gain of the vco times of the input vi so it's going to be voltage to a frequency converter right that's a vco so now what's going to happen is if for example this kvco is positive so i let's consider for that case in that case the the, the let's say the frequency is is larger than the then the FRF after division then when you compare it then it generates a down signal charge pump basically is going to sink some current out of sink some current on a capacitor for example okay so it's going to sink a current means that that voltage on this capacitor is going to go down right and when this capacitor voltage goes down so this VC is somehow let's say is related to VI right so that voltage comes down and the frequency output of the vco goes down so as to match frf now let's consider a case when f naught double dash is smaller than f naught and that is being divided and fed not in fed into P pfd in that case an up signal is generated and that up signal basically steers this current okay into the load which is the capacitor and takes this vc up when this happens then this is somehow proportional to vi so then this is going to go up and then the vco output is going up is going to go up in frequency so now in this case this is phase frequency detector but it usually works on phase right so even if even if it is a fre differing frequency okay then these edges okay so let's say there are these edges okay so let's compare on the rising edge and for this reference also there are edges okay so let's compare on the rising edges so when you compare these two rising edges okay if it comes before the 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 f not double f not dash by n it comes before this edge comes before the reference edge then pfd tells you that you have to take it take it uh, down so that that this edge is delayed right so as to match the the phase so basically that is why it is called a phase lock loop though it is we are trying to match the frequency but that's how it works now what's over here okay there is one capacitor which you see here but usually this is a a certain order what you call a loop filter right so this is going to be a loop filter which may look like like this for example okay so this is going to be a third order loop filter and this output goes as a vi into so this portion sorry this portion is known as as the loop filter and we are going to discuss how to design this loop filter for the stability of this loop so there is a loop here okay so the output of the vco is fed back and is controlling the input of the vco so this is a feedback loop and we have to stabilize this feedback loop now n becomes an important factor let's try to understand how okay so let's say that we were comparing so now we are comparing on these edges correct so they are discrete so now when you do phase phase lock loop analysis okay if you were to continuously compare then it will be a ct system continuous time system but now you are not doing that you are you are doing something like a, a dt approximation of a ct system okay now what does it mean it means that if you are sampling after n after n edges have passed you are sampling so basically divide ratio n becomes important for the stability of the loop so this can be simply understood this way
let's consider a line following robot okay so that robot is going to basically is moving along the line but it detects that it has somehow deviated this way and the line now appears to be on the right side of the robot so then it makes a correction so when it makes a correction it might overshoot it and then now it sees so it is making a correction and it has overshot the line and now it is basically seeing that the line has gone to the left hand side of it so again it makes a correction so if you do this okay so a line following robot is going to move instead of moving in a straight line it is going to move in a zigzag right now why am i say when I, why am i introducing this example for example if the test for the line is after a certain point which is over here right so it's not frequent enough if the the robot is not frequent enough to 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 test where the line is then it might have deviated a lot before it can make a correction right and what may happen is if this if this uh, sampling is of uh, sampling for the reference of the line right is is uh, separated by a larger distance right that means that there is a larger n right so then this might this may might go into uh, uh, what you call un uh, over uh, underbound system basically it's is basically is going to make corrections and then it's going to make corrections and then somehow it's going to lose the lock okay so this robot is going to lose the lock of the line if the the reference is not established for error more frequently and this same can be applied to over here in PLL okay if you have a larger n then you're sampling at, at much smaller sample much much larger time periods and that would cause this loop to become unstable so when you discuss the stability of the loop this n becomes a very important factor and the analogy is very simple over here consider a line following robot which is a ct a dt approximation of a ct system right if it was continuously sampling the reference then this would not have been a problem right because it will make minor and uh, minor error corrections and it will move uh, much closer to the line like a zigzag like this but if you keep on increasing the the time duration of the sample for the reference then it is going to make larger and larger deviations and it may happen that it may become a, a under damped system so if it becomes uh, it becomes an under damped system then it's going to basically become it's going to lose the lock right so so you can represent this loop as a second order system but then it is a dt approximation of a ct system okay so having said that let's look into what are the various sub circuits so i'm not going to go into the mathematics of this loop and stability until the the later point when we establish a loop filter right so for now i am going to go with a very simple treatment without any mathematics right so i have to have a, a bigger picture of what this is and second i want to do a, a component component based design right so that way i want to know the sub circuits which i have to design and the specifications or or the restraints or constraints on those components would depend on the the loop dynamics or the entire mathematics of this closed loop which which we will address okay later on when we establish this loop but for now we are going to focus on the sub circuits of a phase lock loop so i i have a presentation which i'm going to go through okay and then we are going to see how to design that okay so i'm using ads and ads is not used for uh, you know analog circuits or uh, mixed signal circuits okay it is more known for used for you know R, uh, rf or uh, millimeter wave or microwave circuits but i'm doing that uh, because i have a, uh, a pdk available now unique features of this fractional and pls so i will come to what is fractional n okay uh, well i'm designing for a dual band pll for two different bands but this is for this reference uh, it's not it's not true to what we are going to design in this session 
or in the subsequent sessions. So this is an example of a dual band PLL. It's a fully differential loop to minimize the digital and substrate noise pickup, right? So we will see what that means. That means that you know the 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 gates which I'm going to use in the loop or any analog block which I'm going to use in the loop, they are going to be differential. And the advantage of using a differential uh, circuits in throughout the loop is that it's going to be rugged or it's going to be you know immune to the the noise pickups which may come from the supply or the substrate right or may it may be the switching transients okay then it has a charge pump which has a high output impedance means that the leakage okay leakage from the loop uh, filter to ground basically is is very less or rather what it means is that that uh, the the output of the charge bump is going to hold over time it's not going to droop and what it means is that the lock is going to stay there it's not going to to you know unlock and then lock again okay so that's the advantage of using a high output impedance charge uh, charge pump then it has more ma matched source and sink currents so that means that I'm using same amount of current for source and sink so they are matched in the, the magnitude uh, so there is another thing which is called dithering which I will co cover later on which you do on the LSB of the fractional and PLL okay fine feed okay so we are going to discuss that later on uh, wide range of choices of crystal so there is a large divide ratio which I generate so that divide ratio is that n okay I can have the n ranging from uh, a large in a large ratio so so that's why I'm calling this as a wide range of choice of crystal right then is power consumption now this power consumption okay in our current implementation is is going to be you know much smaller than what this presentation is going to give you so what this presentation was done long time back in a, a in a in a gate length which is like 250 nanometer now we are going to make uh, you know we are going to use 130 nanometer and uh, we are trying to we will try to minimize this uh, this power consumption most of it is comes from VCO and most of it comes from charge pump right if we can replace charge pump with a digital equivalent then basically we don't run into that only power consumption is going to be VCO so power consumption we'll talk later on so these are the the features of the PLL which we are going to uh, look at in this presentation uh, where now this presentation basically I'm going to very quickly go through you know the applications the functionalities overview but then my main focus is going to be operation operating principle of fractional and PLL and then fractional and PLL block diagram I'm going to cover then PLL sub circuits and their performance and we are going to start most of our design is going to be sub circuits and then we will integrate those sub circuits into a, a phase lock loop right and then we will discuss locking characteristics of the phase lock loop and phase noise characteristics uh, feature scope of the product so this is for the current presentation but in this series we are going to cover the entire thing okay so PL subsections okay so these are sub circuits now I am not going to read out the list but as we go and design it I will just show you what these are and I'm going to show you in in, uh, in the design itself you know what these are so don't worry about these there are around 30 sub circuits are there and so I'm going to cover all of those now applications it can be used for you know communications for radar mostly that right okay so now the next thing is let's start with okay so let's look at you know um, a transceiver for example so PLL is going to be the heart of a transceiver and uh, here what I'm showing is a, a direct conversion transceiver right so here the top section where IQ is the input it goes through mixers and the mixers are fed from a PLL and the PLL output is basically is going to be sine wave and cos wave 
so there's zero degrees and 90 degrees so basically i generate a quadrature output from a pll so we are going to see how to generate quadrature output from a pll for i and q signals and then this is going to give, be given to a summation block so if you refer to my uh, another playlist on 5g i have shown a design of a summation block here right then it goes to a pa goes to a switch goes to an antenna when it is received it comes into lna amplified uh, then it is given to uh, down conversion mixers again the the input fat is going to be the same sign and cause and we are going to re require i and q so this is an example of a direct conversion transceiver now coming to vco we have discussed this model which is called leeson's model here uh, various frequency various noises of a device are up converted okay so these noises are flicker noises right so this is 1 over f cube then we have got so, so 1 over f is up converted to 1 over f cube right then there are other flat noises which is basically thermal noise and other noises so they are uh, or a short noise for example short noise has a corner frequency but it's flat up to that corner frequency so it's converted to 1 over f square and then there is you know flat the noise is flat after that so at high frequency okay this flat noise is just a thermal noise okay so this is a uh, what is known as a uh, single side bind phase noise so so if you look at the 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 amplitude frequency characteristics you desire omega naught but then you are getting these skirts around it okay so this is referred to as phase noise now if you consider only one side of it, it is called single sideband phase noise and if you blow up this single sideband phase noise you are going to see all these different regions right so this is referred to as Leeson's model now what does a, v, a PLL do so a PLL basically establish a phase reference uh, with this phase reference is much more stable in terms of you know a spectral purity in terms of so its phase noise is much much lower so if you establish the phase of a oscillator with respect to a, a, a crystal for example then its phase noise is going to be much reduced and this advantage is only within the loop bandwidth so basically if you consider a loop so here is a loop and this loop basically represents for a certain bandwidth okay so that loop bandwidth is within which this 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 phase is corrected right so phase noise improvement is in the loop bandwidth of the PLL and then beyond that loop bandwidth the the phase noise is same as that of a VCO now th on the right side you see another figure right so here what is happening is we have stabilized the vco uh, with a pll but then we have also done what is known as noise shaping and this is with the help of what is known as sigma delta modulator so once we go to the details i'll show you what what that sigma delta modulator is doing okay so it all it does is it pushes the noise to a higher order or higher frequency and close to the the the, the frequency of interest okay the phase noise goes down right so this is a combination of sigma delta modulator and uh, a, a loop filter a loop filter is going to uh, remove all the spurs which are beyond this loop bandwidth right okay so now this is how of PLL works on a VCO to stabilize the or to minimize the phase noise the, so this is as simple as this this is a, a, a closed loop system uh, open loop system has a response of gs and it is responding to the the error in the phase okay so hs is basically generated from the output which is gs into phi r okay uh, so we are what we are going to do is at the phase detector we are going to have so phi out is equal to phi r minus phi in times of gs okay then phi out is equal to phi r minus phi out with the the loop function hs so that is going to be phi n 
and then phi out by phi r basically can be simplified as gs divided by 1 plus gs hs it is a second order system what it looks like that's a closed loop response so now here gs is k phi uh, which is the response of a charge bump uh, and pfd multiplied by kvco times of input zs okay so by s okay so there is an integral here integral is because of that integral integral is basically integration on a capacitor right that is why 1 over s function is there okay so 1 over s k over s times of kvco times of zs okay that basically is your gs hs is 1 over n right so f out is going to be f ref times of closed loop function of the system right so that's what it is now if you look at the the model here which is a, a ct model uh, it's an analog model for a for a charge pump pll right so output of a pfd is zs times of integration which is 1 over s times of kvco is gives you f out then it's divided by n and this is fed as a reference so so that's what these equations are for okay so we are not going to go into uh, uh, details of this but there are many books by you know authors like Gardner or Ari Best uh, or uh, uh, Dean Banerjee who is going to uh, where you can read about you know the loop dynamics and we will cover this when we come to the loop filter design okay so the reference is rep is uh, established by a crystal and we call this ocxo that is going to be a compensated temperature compensated crystal oscillator okay so this reference we are going to use in our simulation as a source with a certain phase noise but then you can design a pierce oscillator using a crystal and its output basically serves as a reference for the PLL okay now let's look at the details right let's say okay so let's say our reference is 30 megahertz and I want to generate 2350 megahertz so let's see what's going on okay so my F ref is 30 megahertz and I'm trying to generate uh, let's see that again 2350 megahertz so F0 is 2 2350 megahertz so now the N is going to be F0 by F ref am I right so that is going to be 235 by 3 36 so 18 am I right mm, let's see what, what this is doing wait is something wrong in here Two three five zero divided by thirty seventy eight point three three three. Okay, fine. Okay, let's go back. So this ratio seven three to twenty one, right? So this ratio is seventy eight point three 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 and so on. Okay. Now we can divide this frequency by a integer but what about this fraction this fraction okay so now let's consider this that we divide the signal by 78 for certain number of time and then we divide by 79 for a certain number of time 
okay so let's see we divide by for with with 78 for x times and then we divide uh, 79 times for uh, 2 raised to let's say n minus x times okay so if we choose to divide by 78 and the remaining times of 2 raised to n minus x times we are going to divide by 79 then the average is going to establish somewhere in between right so if you divide for example if x was 2 raised to n by 2 or 2 raised to n minus 1 then the frequency we would have generated is somewhere in between which will be 78.5 so now how does this system work okay so we are going to divide by a certain frequency for 78 time uh, by 78 for certain number of times then we are going to divide by 79 for cert certain number of times okay so how do we establish that okay so let's say that this 2 raised to n so this n is equal to uh, 2 raised to n is equal to 65536 okay so basically then n is uh, 1024 2048 4000 uh, okay it's 16 i think yeah 2 raised to 16 65536 so so now we want to divide uh, by 78 for certain number of times and 79 with certain number of times right so let's say that fraction 0.333 okay so that fraction is a fraction which is x divided by 65536 right so x would be equal to 0.333 times of 655 which is going to be equal to 21845 right so 21845 okay 21845 so out of the out of the the 65 so out of 65536 counts we divide uh, we divide f not uh, by 79 uh, for 21845 times and for the remaining times which is going to be 2 raised to n which is going to be 65536 minus 21845 times I am going to divide by what is known as what is uh, we are going to divide by 78 okay so that means that the total division over this entire cycle okay and I am going to divide by that so so then the average is going to be this way uh, 79 times of uh, 21845 uh, correct and plus 65536 minus 21845 times of 78 divided by 65536 so this is going to be my divide ratio n okay so that way I can take one factor out right so 78 comes out here plus this is going to be 79 minus 78 times of 21845 divided by 65536 okay so that means that this is going to be 78 plus 21845 times of 65536 and this number as we established over here this number is that right so this is going to be 0.333 and so on so the resulting divide ratio is 78.333 so this is how a fractional n would work so i'm going to divide for some time i'm going to divide by a certain number 
and then certain number plus one so this is referred to as n n plus one okay frequency divider n slash n plus one so earlier we used to design pll's which were mostly n n plus one and that had a lot of problems also okay we will see what these problems are now why does this work what is this averaging so this we know is a low pass system this whole loop this whole loop is a low pass system so this vco is basically going to respond to the average average of the number so the average is 78.3333 okay so the vco out would be exact will be accurately the desired f0 <coughs> because it is a low pass system while every loop when we establish this reference we are either dividing by n or by n plus 1 so we are making a difference of one cycle and then we are over a 65536 cycle we are establishing an average to be 0 0.33 78.33333 right so so because it is a low pass system that's why this is going to work now way way so this is n n plus 1 so let's look at what happens in case of a fractional n okay fractional n pll so let me just see if i'm recording okay so i'm recording okay so what is happening in case of fractional n now what happens is once in case of n n plus 1 we are going to generate for example okay okay so let's say we generated in case of a fractional n we generated 2 3 Five zero megahertz. So is it saving? Okay, and when I'm doing n n plus 1 then it tends to give me a spur and this is because I'm dividing by n bear with me okay so we have a spur which comes up because we have a n and n plus 1 now the the way to minimize this spur power if is is by by randomizing it okay so if i randomize n and n plus one i would be able to get rid of this spur now this spur can be further reduced if instead of n i was to go from n plus zero to n plus seven for example so this basically there are eight states instead of two states instead of two states which we have over here in n n by n plus one we are going to have n to n plus seven so we are going to have eight states so that means that we have got three bits to represent these eight states okay and these bits are generated from what is known as sigma delta modulator okay so as d2 as d1 as d0 and these th three bits basically uh, represent uh, uh, a number between n plus 0 to n plus 7 and so if we were to choose 78.33 something then I am going to establish uh, three places to the left so the three places to the left would be 78 minus 3 which is going to be 75 and then I can have eight places on top of 75 right so that eight place is going to be uh, plus eight, right? So 75 plus eight is going to be 83. 
okay so i am going to instead of generating 78 and 79 i am going to generate any number between 75 to 83 with the help of this sigma delta modulator and this count i am going to add to the the feed so what do i have i have a a course feed and the course feed is going to be 75 and then i am going to have a fine feed and that fine feed would be established by SD0, SD1, SD2. So I am going to have coarse feed plus fine feed. And this fine feed is going to be anywhere between 0 to 8. So, so that I can get a number which is 78.333 and so on. Correct? So instead of using 78 and 79, now I am using eight states which are generated by a sigma delta modulator and this is nothing but a randomizer okay so now why does this work okay what what does it do fractional and pll what does it do in terms what does this sigma delta modulator do okay so let's say that a signal has a certain noise on top of it so how do you minimize this noise one way to minimize so for example let's say uh, I am going to take a reading for a, a parameter value okay so I am going to take the reading for let's say 50 times okay so 50 times I'm going to take a certain reading okay so that reading is let's say the height of a student right so H is the the reading which I'm going to do 50 times then how do I arrive at a more accurate H okay is by observing h0 h1 h2 and so on and i am going to add them till h h49 so i have taken 50 readings and then i'm going to divide by 50 so i have taken the average now this is equivalent to a integration right so if i take a signal and and integrate it over time and then i differentiate it so divide by 50 is differentiation so if I do integration followed by a differentiation, I will be able to, to average out the noise. Now this is a first order average. Okay. Now I can do it this way that next time I am going to take integration of integration. So that's basically a, a second order okay, averaging out. Then I can do a integration of integration of integration. So I'm doing a third in order integral and then doing the differentiation. So if I do that to generate these, then that will be called a third order sigma delta modulator. So what I'll do, what what will happen is the following. Okay, so let's say there is a pure, pure tone and what's going to happen is, is I am going to generate first order correction sorry so I'm going to generate a first order correction okay so this happens to phase noise and then after that it rises up now if I do a second order correction I have pushed this well beyond to a certain higher level and this is going to do this okay so I have pushed all the the noise in going from first order to second order I have further pushed the noise out so if I do a third order correction I am going to have push out the noise even further so the noise basically remains the same in terms of energy is thus just that I am going to move this away from from the tone which is desired which is F naught and the farther I move away and then I can put a loop filter around it so if I put a filter around it then what do I have I have got rid of the higher order noise so I have a pure tone so this is how a Sigma Delta modulator works right so it is doing a first order correction a second order correction and a third order correction right so that is going to be summed up to the the course feed which is 75 and then we will generate an average which is this so this is how a Sigma Delta modulator would work in a PLL now coming to here that's what I'm trying to show you how you generated a certain fraction okay now uh, 
here I'm showing uh, a coarse feed, a fine feed, and the output of a sigma delta is basically summed up to the coarse feed, and that is fed to the multimodulus frequency divider. So if you divide by n and n plus one, this is called dual modulus. Uh, sorry, so it is basically two. And so I'm going to have a multimodulus frequency divider if I can divide by any ratio, right? So a multimodulus frequency divider basically can divide with any ratio. So we are going to use uh, in digital circuit design uh, series we design a two by three cell. So we are going to use that by cascading them. I can do a multimodulus frequency divider. Okay. So these are going to be digital blocks. Okay. So don't worry about what is CML to CMOS and CMOS to CML this we will come to later on so the loop is very simple we have a reference we have a PFT we have a charge pump we have a loop filter we have a VCO and here I would tell you that I'm not generating the output frequency desired I'm generating two-third of that now I'll tell you what happens with two-third why am I generating two-third so let's say my desired output frequency is F0 But instead of F0, I generate two third of F0, right? And then I divide I divide this frequency by two. So one component is so this is component number one. So this is the output of the PLL. Then I'm going to divide this by two, which is component number two, which is going to be F0 by three. So I have divided into half. And then I'm going to mix them so that the sum of the frequencies is going to come to F0. So from output of a PLL which is twice of F0, I have generated F0 by uh, mixing the frequency with half of it. So so that's the, the, the thing. And how do you generate half frequency? Very simple. You have a master slave, master slave flip-flop, right? Okay, so this basically is going to divide the frequency into half. Okay, master slave flip flop, it's a T flip flop, it's going to do divide the frequency by half. Now, if I tap in from here or from here, that means the, the phase difference here is going to be 180. Okay, depending on whether I tap the master or the slave. And in the higher frequency, this is going to be 90. So basically, I am, if I mix with F, F0 by 3, from the output of a master, I'm going to get, let's say, 0 degrees phase, F0. And if I take the output from a slave, so the same 2 by 3 F0 plus F0 by 3 is going to give me F0 angle 90 degrees. So if I generated a cos here, and then I have generated a sine here. Now, so so what, what I have done is, uh, instead of generating F0, I'm generating 2 third of F0. And then I'm doing a half of it, and then mixing with itself with with the uh, with the output of the PLL to generate F0. But then if I take tap in master output or slave output from a T flip flop, I can generate a a, a, a cos theta and a sine theta, right? I can generate a cos wave and a sine wave, and these are going to modulate the I and Q signals. Now there are other ways of doing this, but the advantage of this doing this is the following. Uh, if you generate a frequency which is different from the output frequency so I'm going to use a mixer here right so the output of the VCO is given to a mixer so if I generate a frequency which is different from the output frequency then there is something called pull-in like for example uh, I have a strong signal of F0 and the PV PLL frequency is two-third of F0 so it is far away from F0 so F0 is going to pull the, the VCO. Uh, it's not going to pull in the VCO because VCO is far away from the output frequency. So this pull-in problem is solved if I generate a frequency which is different from the output frequency. That's one thing. Second thing is two-third of frequency is smaller than F0. So that means that the VCO which I'm using is going to be lower power than the VCO which is going to be producing F0. Then, so both so there's another way of doing this is if you generate F0, you are going to use a quadrature filter at the output to generate quadrature, which is, is cos and sine. That, that's another way of doing this, right? So you can do either way. So only thing is that the output is going to be a mixer in case of a uh, 2 by 3 
f naught generation so that's what you see here okay f naught basically is two third and uh, that basically is divided by two and then it is generating the quadrature and here there are two mixers basically there I'm, I'm doing a dual band so I am able to do a, a two ranges with 0 90 phase differences so this is for a specific uh, you know customer so we are not going to use a dual band here or we can do even a multi band if you want to cover a larger frequency range okay so next thing is these are the outputs from ADS simulation these are not drawings okay so I'll show you what this is so this is a, a Sigma Delta modulator response so this is you are getting the output from Sigma Delta modulator and you will see that the numbers generated are going to be between 0 and 7 right so these are the numbers generated between 0 and 7 so the average is around 3.5 okay so the average would be around 3.5 for this one okay so this is the Sigma Delta modulator and the correction can be understood this way that I am di dividing if I divide n n plus 1 n n plus 1 then I'm going to have a correction and that correction is going to lead to a spur and if I use a Sigma Delta modulator with the modul multi modulus divider then this spur energy is going to spill out or dither out in diff in the, along the frequency so that's going to be much lower okay so now uh, what does it look like uh, what is a multi modulus uh, frequency divider okay so we know that we can divide using a T flip flop we can divide the frequency into half so that means that if you go from if you have a uh, cascaded okay T flip flop which is a counter okay so you can go in the ranges 2 raised to n right so multi modulus frequency divider okay so you every tip flip flop divides by 2 okay so if you cascade n flip flops then you can divide by 2 raised to n so now the issue is the following what if I want to divide so it can divide in the uh, if I use one flip flop divide by 2 2 flip flops divide by 4 8 16 32 and so on so I can divide only by these numbers now what if I want to divide uh, something uh, let's say between 32 and 63 so if I want to have a continuous division between any number between 32 and 63 so here I'm going to have 32 and then 64 so I have only two things two numbers which I can divide by but I, if I want to divide between 32 and 63 by any number so how would I do that so there comes in what is known as 2 by 3 cell okay so every cell is going to divide either by 2 or by 3 so if I cascade 5 of this 5 of this 2 by 3 cells okay so let's say C0 to C4 these are C1 C2 C3 C4 so then the di base divide ratio if I divide all the cells by 2 then it is going to be 32 now if the LSB divides by 3 rather than dividing by 2 then the divide ratio will be 33 now if the C1 divides by 3 then this is going to be this is going to be 32 plus whatever this number is this number is 2 34 uh, 33 34 right so we are going to divide by 34 if that's that's the cell which is dividing if both the cells are dividing then we are generating 35 right then if this cell is dividing only so basically if this is this then we are generating uh, this is what 4 32 plus 4 36 so we are dividing by 36 now if I introduce here also a division this is going to be 36 okay so now this number is how much this number is 6 right 32 plus 6 is 38 
right so i can feed in any number here which is a binary representation so the answer would be 32 plus uh, c0 into 2 raised to 0 plus c1 into 2 raised to 1 plus c2 into 2 raised to 2 plus c3 into 2 raised to 3 plus c4 into 2 raised to 4 so depending on c0 to cn i can choose any number so in a limiting case if c0 to c4 are 1 all of them 1 so this is equivalent to 31 so 32 plus 31 is going to be 63 so i can divide if i cascade 2 by 3 cells i can divide i can generate a divide ratio from 32 to 63 any number now i can do one more thing okay i can make this as a 5 slash 6 bit so if i do that then i can extend the range again from 64 to 127 so i can have a continuous range from 32 to 127 okay so that's 5 by 6 here so in my representation that's 5 by 6 bit okay so i can gen generate a, a wide range of division ratio from 32 to 127 i can even make it much larger range also right okay so this is what that multimodulus frequency divider is doing and this is what is represented over here okay now what is this 2 by 3 cell okay so when p input for example or c input is high then it's dividing by 3 otherwise it is dividing by 2 so in my maths that's what is happening this c number if it is 0 is dividing by 2 if it is 1 it is dividing by 3 right so that's what a 2 by 3 prescaler is going to do and when you cascade you will get a multimodulus frequency divider okay now this we will see later on in when i discuss the circuits now here is a sigma delta modulator now what is a sigma delta modulator as i told you uh, let's say i have input k to this modulator or to this accumulator right so i have let's say a 16 bit accumulator right so what does the accumulator do accumulator basically adds the previous state to the current state and gives the output so this i can keep on doing this okay so i can add the previous state to the current state previous state to the current state so that means that i am integrating the signal so that's the integrator and then i can have a differentiator so the first stage is a first order integrator and a differentiator now what is going to the differentiator is the overflow bit so let's say i have a 16 bit and 16 bit accumulator and to this 16 bit accumulator i am going to fed, feed a number right let's say that number i feed is 20 so the total number of states is 265536 so if i feed 20 to 65536 states okay if i feed 20 to this accumulator then how many times this this uh, counter will or accumulator will overflow 20 times in the entire cycle of 65536 you can prove to yourself so if you have 20 next time you are going to have 20 plus 20 40 then you are going to have 40 plus 20 60 and so on till you reach 2 raised to n and then it's going to overflow so it's going to generate a carry bit right so if you keep on doing this accumulation then over an uh, entire cycle of 65536 okay it is going to have a overflow which is going to be 20 times okay so this is what that c0 is okay similarly the next stage is output of the first stage given to the accumulator of the second stage now it is going to overflow much faster right it's going to overflow much faster and then the third one is going to overflow even much faster because you are doing first integral on the first stage second integral on the second stage and third integral on the third stage third stage so what does it mean it means that it is doing uh, integration and differentiation for every stage 
okay and the flow overflow bits are c0 c1 and c2 and the way is if you integrate it uh, once you have to differentiate it once so the signal which is c2n is going to differentiate it going to be differentiated uh, three times if it is a third integral you are going to differentiate three times similarly uh, uh, c1 okay that's going to be differentiated two times to generate y2n and uh, the first integral or accumulator c0n is going to be uh, differentiated once okay so in a uh, implementation here we are going to use what is known as mash 111 uh, where everything is digital so instead of differentiator we are going to have different circuits and then we are going to have accumulators uh, which are again digital circuits right so this is a sigma delta modulator and the output is going to be three bits right so we will see the design of a sigma delta modulator okay so this is a sigma delta modulator in ads and this has a 16-bit uh, 316 bit, three 16 -bit uh, accumulators and then you have a compensation network which is a differentiator it generates a three bit output and you can see the value goes from zero to seven so i'm going to generate depending on you know the average which i or depending on what i feed in okay or the average i establish okay so that average is going to be generated by averaging these bits over six five five three six so what it means is if you choose large uh, accumulator large large means wider accumulator then you have to uh, uh, you have to basically go for six five five three cycles to establish the frequency or locking okay so if you choose a fine feed okay for fine feed you choose a larger number of bits uh, which goes into a sigma delta modulator right then you are going to uh, uh, settle in to a locking frequency in a much longer time because you know two raised to n cycles you have to wait so you have to you have to judge you know wh whether you need that kind of frequency division between the two numbers or between the eight numbers whether you need that kind of you know resolution by a PLL so basically the width of the fine tune basically decides the resolution right resolution uh, in terms of frequency output right so whether you need that resolution uh, versus your uh, your trade-in would be the settling time right so you have to decide you know whether you want to use a 16 bit or a 12 bit or a 8 bit uh, that will basically decide uh, what what resolution you want uh, frequency resolution at the output of a PLL right so that's the sigma delta modulator now the LSB has what is called a deterring circuit and that dithering circuit is nothing but you are randomizing LSP of a sigma delta modulator and the way you randomize it is with a, with a, with a closed loop so whatever is the output of sigma delta I'm going to control the, the delay of this loop which is a ring oscillator and then I'm going to generate an output so basically I have deterred the, the LSB of a sigma delta modulator to further minimize the spurs okay so this is when you start designing you will come to know now let's see the other blocks so sigma delta modulator multi is uh, is another block which we have just discussed so we have discussed a uh, um, multimodulus frequency di divider we have discussed sigma delta modulator which is a mash 111 right so now let's look at the other blocks in this sub circuits the other block is the PFD and this is known as zero dead zone PFD so this is a tri-state uh, okay uh, phase uh, this is a three-state phase di state diagram here if FRF comes first then what happens to the current current source of sync and if if, if F diff comforts what happens and so this is this is like you know every every rising or falling edge I'm comparing whether FRF comes first or F diff comes first. If FRF comes, so if I am in a high impedance state, which represents the locked locked stage. Now, if FRF comes earlier than F diff, then I would 
instantiate i would basically initiate up pulse or a down pulse depending on kvco which is ni minus negative or positive so i'm going to either source a current into a loop filter or sink a current from the loop filter so we are going to go to a certain state and if ff continues to come uh, earlier than f diff then i re remain in this state but if f diff comes first then f ref i go back to the high impedance stage and again if f diff is coming earlier than f ref i go to either source or sink the current which is another stage which state which i come to right so this is a three state a three stage uh, three state state machine and this is the the a very simple circuit diagram to generate a zero pfd and the i'll tell you this feedback loop which is establishing this uh, there is a feedback loop in here and the delay basically establish you know the dead zone uh, this is a zone in which the pfd doesn't respond now this is going to be a zero dead zone pfd and what i mean by this is can be seen here okay if one of the pulse is coming earlier than the other so if you see left hand side and the right hand side okay so either i generate a up pulse or a down pulse right so so that's the response of a pfd and when i zoom in i see this is a zero pfd because it is going to finally lock in phase so this is that so this is the another block of a uh what you call uh fractional and pll which is going to be a zero dead zone pfd okay and we will look into the details of that then uh, there is something called charge pump and this is a current steering charge pump and uh, this either sources the current into the output or sinks the current from the output right so you have a current source and current sink right and then these are operated by up and down pulse so as to generate either source or sink current so either current pulses are being sourced or synced uh to from the loop filter so loop filter ha would have first capacitor there so that would be a charge pump uh so the other block which we have done is charge pump and we know what that charge pump does okay now let's see another block okay and so this is the response of so this is uh, you know high impedance state so i'm trying to generate a current source which is hi output high impedance so so that's what that is and this is charge point response and this would be basically in both directions up and down so i'm generating you know up and down and then i'm looking at integration on a loop filter how the 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 voltage integrates okay now loop filter is another uh design which basically depends on the the sigma delta modulator plus the loop dynamics and uh, uh, this is a, a, a mesh 111 so now this is going to be a fourth order sigma uh, loop filter but the fourth order is going to be inherently unstable so i'm i'm doing a third order loop filter and uh, there are certain equations to to place the poles and uh, you know pole placements and for that i have written a routine in ads to generate a loop filter so here i can basically give various inputs to this like loop bandwidth vco gain then uh, your charge pump gain and then uh, what phase margin you want to generate for the loop for stability right and then there are two poles their frequency ratios this is t3 by t1 and the gamma optimization factor so all this you can read in uh, dean banerjee's book right and i have written these equations in ads to to give you the 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 loop filter okay so that would be a loop filter okay so and then the last block or not the, the second last block is going to be a vco this is a lc vco okay you can use a uh, c capacitor bank for different frequency bands where i am using two different vcos for two different bands you can just use capacitor banks or i'm using two separate vcos so basically vco is lc vco which i have already covered 
in this session and the last one is going to be so there are two VCOs which I switch between the two bands right and they are responses and then there is a, a mixer output mixer which is going to generate the which is going to mix the two-third frequency with one-third frequency so there's going to be an output mixer output mixer to generate the quadrature for quadrature okay you can use a quadrature filter if you generate the same frequency so various blocks which you can see here are multimodulus divider a sigma delta modulator a zero door dead zone PFD a charge pump a loop filter a LCVCO or you can search uh, digitally controlled VCO in case of a of uh, uh, all digital PLL here I'm going to use capacitor banks which are scaled so that's your your D, D, uh, DSO what you call or this is LCVCO in an analog filter and then I am going to have an output mixer for generating the quadrature right okay so this is what it looks like in in the representation this is to be integrated and then we are checking over here the locking characteristics so this is a loop filter which you see here okay which is generated from the same algorithm which I have written in ADS okay and we are trying to lock to a frequency here so it's, it's going to go for 65536 cycles to lock to a certain frequency okay so the the frequency is going to build up from from something like this right and it's going to build up over time right so this is what a PLL would look like and I have discussed various subcomponents now I also want to discuss with you very quickly okay so this is this is ADS uh, uh, represent a implementation of the PLL so you have the Sigma Delta block okay so these are all so this is a Sigma Delta modulator so this is a Sigma Delta modulator I will come to this in a bigger picture okay the bigger picture is let's say I'm going to have test bench and I'm looking at the locking characteristics uh, so locking characteristics let's pick up any example of locking characteristics here okay so this is a, a top level uh, top level representation of the schematic and this is the loop filter is going to be off chip what's on chip is inside this block right so let's go inside this block and the feeds are basically going to be so here the the feeds are over here the fine feed and the coarse feed right fine feed and coarse feed so coarse feed is C0 to C5 and C6 and F0 to F15 F0 to F15 is the fine feed and C0 to C56 is going to be the coarse feed and if you go inside you are going to see that comes in here that fine feed comes to the Sigma Delta modulator with the dithering circuit over here and this is fed into uh, a coarse feed as a summing so you're going to sum this so this is a sigma delta modulator so this has a, a three three orders so there are three accumulators which are each one is a 16 bit so if you look at what this is so this is a one bit accumulator with a d flip flop okay so msd latch and you are going to take the 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 current state which is a and then the previous state is b because it is going through a, uh, a d latch or a d yeah so D latch basically stores the previous stage right so uh, the you are going to sum up the previous count with the with the current count and then the output of that is going to be accumulated so this is going to be 16 bit so here you can see 16 bit and so there are three of them so this is first order correction this is second order correction this is third order correction this is a differentiator differentiator network 
okay so basically this is made up of uh, differencing circuits so adders are used as subtractors right so we are going to use that this is all digital again okay so this represents over here what we discussed mesh 111 which is this one so this is same as if you go to ads where is ads yeah so that's that sigma delta modulator and that generates a 3 bit output and that's being added over here added over here rather so basically it's it's added here adder for sigma delta modulator so coarse feed and then the three bits output from the so these are the three bits output from the sigma delta and this is the coarse feed which is c0 to uh, c0 to c5 c6 or c5 c4 c5 sorry c4 c5 right and then this after being added it is given to cml to cmos to cml converter so don't worry about that this is a multi modulus frequency divider right so this is all 2 by 3 cells these are all cml and then 5 6 slash 6 bit is implemented by this logic right so don't worry about that we will once we design you will see that and then we have a cml to uh, cml to cmos converter so this is the output of the frequency divider so basically f not clocks it uh, so f not clocks it and the output cml to cmos converter is given to pfd right so if you go to ads so its output its output will go back and feed the phase to frequency phase uh, pfd and this is your pfd zero dead zone pfd right and these are all fully differential gates so these are ppcl gates push pull complementary logic gates so this is what you have to design okay and then the output goes to a charge pump so this is a current steering charge pump right and then this output goes into a loop filter and then the loop filter comes in here and this this basically controls the control voltage of vco there are two vcos right their control voltage is a combined here so basically i'm either going to be in either of the bands so i'm switching between the two vcos and then i have an output mux depending on which band i'm going to work with and then there is an output buffer so don't worry about that okay so what this is is vco is being controlled by the output from a loop filter and then that that vco that output of a vco is divided by this programmable or mmft so this is the entire pll fractional and pll which we are going to design in this analog series analog integrated circuit design using ads okay so i wanted to give you uh, an overview of a fractional and pll with sigma delta modulator and dithering circuit before i take on the design okay the next thing which i'm going to tell you is i am going to use a uh, ihp sigay process for designing this pll analog pll and then later i'm going to modify this pll into a all digital pll so that will i'll continue in the digital circuit design playlist okay so for from the next uh, session i'm going to generate these sub sub circuits okay so let me show you the list of sub circuits okay so here is the list of sub circuits i'm going to generate these sub circuits for designing the pll right so i will start with multi modulus frequency divider so i'll start with 2 by 3 prescaler and then i will do a, a 5 slash 6 bit prescaler and then i will go design the mesh sigma delta modulator is the next thing okay and then vcos and then the other blocks okay so i'm going to stop here this was a overview of a fractional npll thanks a lot thank you